Welcome to the Contemporary Music Centre Salon and the third in this winter season as we journey through life's wintry days both physically and metaphorically and a very special salon as we present the world premiere screening of Alton O'Brien's cinematic opera Secret Life One Magical Duality and I have the great pleasure of welcoming Alton O'Brien who's one of two composers on the CMC Emerging Composer Programme back to CMC after many months to have a chat yeah. about this new work. Great to see you Alton. And you too. Great, great to be here in the CMC library. How are you keeping on this midwinter well. evening? Very well. It's nice to get out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> we all feel that, don't we? Um, this new work, it really is a, a feast for the eyes and ears, Alton. And a side of you that we haven't seen before, your, your yeah. visual prowess. Um, it's, you've titled it a cinematic opera. And so I'm curious, have you come up, you've come up with that title, right? Well, yeah, because it's um, essentially it is a film, but it's it's focused more on the, the music came first in it. And then there was this story narration throughout, which in this is by um, Tom Rosengrave. So it's just the, the stories with this music coming together and they're interwoven for the, the whole experience. So I was going for um, but it, it was writing an opera, first of all, but um, in these COVID times too, that it wouldn't be a staged production or anything. It was for this medium. Yeah, but you yes, know. you were really writing very much in the in the lockdown. This yeah. project came out of totally. uh, thoughts during the lockdown, walks during the lockdown. WhatsApp messages during the lockdown, that's where <laughs> it came from. So, you know, it really is, I suppose, a whole, I mean, it's very much, you know, you're, you're, you're a centre stage, you're playing it in the video, you're playing playing the work and obviously you, you've created the electronics, you've written the text yeah. um, and, and your sister and brother are involved as well. But, um, you know, for for all that being sort of the Alton O'Brien show, I mean, it is very collaborative, as I say, your sister, your brother, Tom, yeah. different narrators. A few different storytellers and all those stories came from, genuinely came from WhatsApp messages. And I'd, I'd ask people later, do you mind me using these? So there were stories that they were bringing in, which really suited the overall theme. But then in, in terms of the script, I had written it out, but then I ended up using quite a bit from my sister and brother, Siphon Killian, and also another person, Teresa, who wrote um, a couple of stories as well, which were, again, in this theme. They were actually for a different thing she was writing at the time, but they were about the exact same topic. And um, she's recorded in that as well, so... Yeah, that all came together. Then there's the, I had asked, say, Antonio Breschke is in it as well. And he had sent um, some recordings of his piano playing, which are used as samples throughout as well. And um, Angus McAuley as well is another one who I just, I had asked him for a story as well. Came through WhatsApp. Um, I ended up using the WhatsApp recordings too to keep to that aesthetic, <laughs> you know, the, the sound. But there's a great sound that came out of it in the end. And uh, Keen Hamilton was the mixing engineer, so he made it all all work in yeah, the end with those voices. It's very arresting and engaging. Right. And when you talk about the themes, you know, there, there, there's quite a number of themes yeah. running through. But, you know, you did want to very much explore the this autogenetic training yeah. in cystic fibrosis and, and yeah. breath and breathing and routine, I suppose, is another thing that really strikes me because, you know, during the lockdown, our routine, our all our routines were blown out of the water and we had yeah. to find new routines. Yeah. But tell me about the autogenetic training and yeah. why this is something you've been pondering on and, and wanted to probe in this work. Yeah, so there's autogenic training and then drainage, which is usually used in different respiratory conditions, um, usually to clear the lungs. Airway clearance is what it's about. So first you're understanding that it's just the machine of the lungs and how they're working. But what was way more interesting was um, starting to see them, the lungs and the breath as more of an access point to the secret inner life. And this uh, fantastic kind of, you know, visual world and a place where, you know, you descend down into it and you're operating from this place now within the lungs and what you see and what you hear and what you learn from it is essentially what this is all about. Um, and Tom narrates in this as well, uh, talking about it as a place where all your dreams and memories exist at once. So you have this access to your complete inner life. And it's kind of, funnily enough, more of an out of body experience, but based re really deep within the body. Um, and that's what the autogenic draining does actually teach, even though the first first um, purpose of it is just clear the lungs or better breathing, learning to 
you know, I mean, I think we have it a lot in society these days, but more and more yoga training and everything yeah. like that. It does it's remind me of, of, of it is, yoga. It's yeah. like there's a load of things now about the breath and how it's so important and what you can learn from it, I suppose. But I was always interested because first it was a physiotherapy and in cystic fibrosis, just the pure and simple thing of clear that crap out of the lungs, you know, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was the point. But when you're exploring it, then you get into this other world. So, of course, that made me think of the fairies straight away. And I was like, I love this other world business. Yeah. But um, that's essentially what this is about, the exploration of it. So when Tom is narrating it, he hasn't really figured it out yet, like exactly how to do it. It's a bit of a, you know, he's learning how to do it. He's descending into the lungs. And every time he goes down, there's this figure at the, at the threshold blocking him from getting in. But he's to learn his way. So it's a bit of a, an adventure story. Yeah, it's quite primal as well, I think. You know, yeah. we talk about the lungs and voice and primal screams and, yeah. and I suppose singing, you know, and being so physical and yeah. what you talk about there about yoga and breathing and um, and so many uh, surveys now and so much research into the, the kind of physical and mental benefits of, of singing. Yeah. And, and breath as well that, yeah. that way but you don't sing in this work you play no, the no. fiddle and the viola as you as fiddle you always viola, do yeah. and you have these beautiful atmospheric electronics oh great glad to hear that now <laughs> yeah how, how did you create those Te- you, so you used to, I, you, you did mention some samples there samples earlier samples first and then there's synthesizers that I've been just working with for the last two years um, all uh, all through the computer all done at home as well and I've been there's about five little different instruments that I've been kind of honing in on and synthesizer sounds that are used right throughout it. So I think it is, it's limited to those five. And um, it's it's using a lot of field recordings as well as samples and then samples from the actual other musicians that are featured who are storytellers in it. But I've also used some samples of their music, just little riffs and things that are um, used as a starting point for all these electronics. Mm-hmm. And um, it's... It more kind of like the, the fiddle in it is more of the storyteller, whereas the electronics are really like the the music that surrounds the whole thing. When if you go into the lungs, this is what you're hearing now. It's a bit more of a magical space. Yeah, and a bit it's a, trippy. Is the, yeah, yeah, I think it certainly fit. creates that kind of yeah. ambient um, yeah, just, atmosphere for sure. You know, um, you know, we talked about what you're what you're hoping to kind of probe in in this work, and you know, that was written during lockdown and in response to lockdown and, and new routines we had to find. But I think what strikes me when I when I when I saw it and, and when I when I hear it is kind of you really have taken that time, you've really used that time to sort of explore other areas that you were interested in because yeah, I didn't know of this visual uh, interest that you had no, and, and <laughs> no. visual skill that you had. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, and it's really very high quality. I mean, so, you know, for you, I mean, you're a performer as well as a composer. All gigs have pretty much kind of stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they were they were most definitely stopped at that time. Was this kind of out of necessity, Alton, that you, you know, to keep routine, to, yeah. to, as I say, to form this new routine, to keep productive, to to keep that belief in, in your artistry and, and your and your skill and craft? I think that was a huge part of it. I like the routines and autogenic as well, that it was a new one to explore. But the the kind of filling ma- film making aspect and working with visuals has been something I've been doing for a good few years, but I've never put anything out or never actually done anything with it, really. It was just something, it was almost like a spare time thing Uh that I'd be messing with a bit and had some interest there. But yeah, the lockdown was was a great excuse to really get into that. And I think it also came from doing some live streams um, earlier on and just seeing that bad quality of the video I was doing for it myself and because we didn't have any equipment or anything. And um, it just, you know, it just be, I'm like, is this that interesting? And I wanted to work more with the the visual aspect of that like what you're actually seeing now is more important than what you're hearing perhaps in those kind of things so it was um, a bit of an exploration of that and much like this whole cinematic opera it's about exploration and play and yeah. 
maybe making a mess of it. Yeah, and I, no, I mean, I, I don't think you've made a mess of it, no, by the way. I mean, parts be- it, beautiful <laughs> abstract <laughs> abstract um, parts in it um, visually, which I found particularly uh, engaging, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was really struck by a, a couple of the kind of big quotes in it, you know, that, that you use. I mean, I think it's Heather in Movement 6. Yeah. Um, the, the, the swimming, I'm going to call it the swimming one, I hope you yeah. don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and, you know, this diving, very, you know, capturing what we all said to each other what we all felt that you know it it really made us focus on the, the today and what we were going to do today and that sort of all future plans were yeah. sort of gone out the window I yeah. mean for you as an artist personally with you know we've talked about how productive you were but obviously there's a great sense of frustration at that time yeah and well actually that's a funny one because that was a genuine whatsapp message to my brother from his friend Heather and she, she had asked afterwards can I can I record it properly or can I write it out and practice a bit? And I said, not a hope. Because it really did capture a lot of that, just in her voice and everything. Yeah. That frustration Yes, and the hesita- well, which, sort of hesitancy yeah. of her voice as well. You know, yeah. she was kind was of, perfect. I, I want to articulate this, but I feel a wee bit guilty saying it, kind yeah. of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that was, I think that was early lockdown. So that was the first experiences of all this, the madness and the newness of it, um, of what was going on. But um, that footage then also came from someone else uh, that caught it on a GoPro, you know, the, the sea diving stuff. So that was the f- that was the first piece that was made for all of this. And that was the idea with the collaboration of different kind of random people coming in, just sending in bits and bobs and we'd stick it all together. And I think that was a great way for me to alleviate any frustration of everything being cancelled and disappearing. It's like, this is actually far more interesting. And if it wasn't for COVID, I'd never do it because there'd be gigs to be doing and more important things. But, but the most important question is, did you go swimming as well? Because everybody I, went sea bathing, didn't they? They all did. I did have a little dip, all right, because that was around the time of my birthday as well in July. Um, I actually went in somewhere, I think it was Dunleary who went in and then I saw a sign when he came out saying that there's a, a new sort of new species of jellyfish or something found around there. Oh, right. And they were quite poisonous or something. And I said, Jesus Christ, now, for, one of the first times out of the house and probably end up with COVID and a new jellyfish sting and back home then. Yeah. The jellyfish didn't make it into this work though. No, it didn't. No, no. but owls did. Owls. owls. Owls have also made their way into another work of yours that owls. I had the great pleasure of sitting in a workshop yeah. for with, with oh, Kirkus yes. um, back <laughs> the in, it, yes, about the, the Composer Hub project, which is uh, our Kirkus uh, project as part of yeah. their being the ensemble in residence here at CMC and, and you're involved in that. So so yeah, here here I am listening to uh, Secret Life One, and the owl pops up again. What 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 is it with Elton O'Brien and owls? Well, I know that's it was a relatively new thing, but it was it was related to autogenic as well. And when I was doing some of this, and every time I was doing the visualizations about the descending down, I was coming across owls all the time. And this idea of the night owl, I was looking into it more and more, and the sim the symbols behind the owl as well, and. Often the owl is seen as something that's, you know, can see and hear in the dark. It's operating in the night, kind of bringing light to the dark in a way. So it's bringing this clarity from when you're going in to explore this dark place and the owl's already there knowing exactly what's going on. Um, so I think with, when we were doing the night owl piece for Kirkosh, I was hoping Tom is in that as well and he'd be wearing a, a night owl mask as well because the mask is... Um, is representing all this transformation and metamorphosis, which is what this is about, really exploring that other place and trying to bring yourself into this other world, which requires some sort of transformation as well. And the owl symbolizes all of that. Yeah. So it's not just a night owl, like staying up all night because you've had too much wine or something. Or, you know, it's um, it's that it's the transformation, the metamorphosis and the owl is the symbol for it. Well, there are lots of symbols right throughout this work, Alton. We could really talk all day and yeah. un- unpick all seven movements, but yeah. I, I think it's time for us to, to share it uh, yeah. with the world. Um, Secret Life, number one, Magical Duality, a cinematic opera by Alton O'Brien.
horizons and the infinity would never trouble you. Nothing could draw you out. As a human, your daily experience is riven with fracture and fragmentation. Like a nomad, you wander from event to event, from person to person. your breath, and yourself. It's the most intimate relationship we have in life. And here I sit, and here I sit in the night, tired, tired but, but not, not sleeping. sleeping. I'm drifting through memories. I'm drifting. Breathing. Breathing deep, I... Breathing deep, I follow my breath down into my lungs. There's a figure at the threshold, strange sight. I ask her what her name is, but she says she doesn't know. Breath.
Later, when the string broke, the lemon fell down. We could taste bitterness on our tongues. There is no place for reason in the dead of the night. She walks through the mist, through the gray, fuzzy static of the night. She emerges, clarity. Descend, lung. Drop yourself down into the lungs. Have a look about, walk about. Bring color to it. At birth, the lungs are a pinkish white. Youthful lungs have a pink vibrancy and a white innocence. As one ages, the colour turns to a dark, slaty grey, mottled in patches edging ever and ever towards a black colour. In old age, the colour transforms to a beautiful shade of black, a shade of wisdom and natural growth. Close your eyes, I was told. Imagine this. Descend into your lungs and open your eyes. You're young. You see shades of black on the walls of your lungs. You feel an ugliness that you can't shake. Time stops dancing. Turn the walls pink. You feel vibrancy, energy and life. Time bounds about you. You're old. You see black shades of wisdom Your memories and dreams create moving shadows in the walls of your lungs. You're old. Turn the walls pink. What does this metamorphosis metamorphosis do do to you? Are you a superhero? Do you become Benjamin Button? On which side of the balance do you land? Beautiful or terrible? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. into a dream. My dreams, stories, my memories like scars, all present at once. Here's a story. There's no reason in the dead of the night.
So, I don't know if this is any good to you, but uh, there was a night there a few days ago, a few nights ago, and I was lying in bed, and I woke up, and it was three, three o'clock in the morning or something. And there was a fella roaring, roaring away. Nice yeah, fella, like. And uh, I stuck my head out the window. And uh, he roaring away, singing away. And the uh, nice fella, like. And uh, I stuck my head out the window. Encourage people that Jesus, you know, this is what's wrong, what's wrong with my voice? You know, I'd love to hear a good song, but not it roared back and he just kept singing away. I was like, Jesus. So, sure, all you could do is harmonize with him. But now I went back to sleep, so that's it.
she walks towards you, she walks towards me, she walks towards us. And later, when the string goes around the low, fell down, we could taste bitterness on our tongues. Oh. Hey. it kind of feels like I feel the sense of cal calmness honestly and that I haven't felt many times before it's thrown all the future plans out the window and forces you in a good way that is to think about today I find the whole time quite lovely though, if I'm honest. 
let's just take it day by day because so far we're doing all right. I understand it is going to get worse and this is just a start, but for now, I'm not scared. was going to change us. But I imagine there will be excitement and celebration.
one that I haven't felt many times before. It's thrown all the future plans out the window and forces you, in a good way that is, to think about today. Peace out. I am not the happiest man on earth, and neither do I aim to reach these rays that caress my skin and bleed through my bones. My feet have grown weary from the sky, delving into the deepest of grounds where desolate souls scrape for the remaining light that glows dimly under the harrowing pain. I'm a traveller and a shifter. I've suffered and I've burned with joy. A humming melancholy sleeps through these states, reminding me of a boundless love that presents itself through its absence. The inalienable presence of this void, standing alone in solitude, gives one space to grow, where limbs stretch outwardly and mingle with the everlasting possibilities that move freely within space. Suffering scavenged and dug the mould of which it was imprisoned by, as the endurance of pain fought the fact that it aimed as the cathartic will, as the cathartic, as the cathartic will aimlessly exhausts itself into a lake of equanimity, the warmth of its waters dissolve pain into a boundless space of love. And thus the cumbersome yearning becomes flowing strength through which a delicate softness flourishes as a compassionate smile opens itself to the world, a ceaseless love dissolves itself into the thickness of the air, embracing all it touches. I was told that the kindest people were the ones who have suffered the most, but the love that they are willing to give is the very same as the love of which they were de deprived. As we meet their eyes, one falls into a deep rooted tenderness that marvels in its own solitude. Within my being there is unbound potential. Within my being there is unbound potential to unlock and explore unbound realities. In my sleep I'll glimpse them as I become lucid in my dreams. In my sleep tonight I'll discover reality as I become aware that I'm dreaming. Breath, my most intimate relationship. I'll continue my journey into the unbound realities of my being.
Autogenic drainage is about clearing your lungs. Autogenic drainage is self-hypnosis. It's meditation. It's physical and tough and teaches you to exist in that healing space where everything is always swirling. Time is circular and time is colour. Close your eyes. Listen. Breath is consciousness, storing thoughts, dreams, memories in the lungs. Deep in the lungs is a healing space. Time is colour-coded from pink to black to pink. It's drinking a wild wine that teaches you the balance of rationality and of wild improvisation. It reconciles wild nature within you and nature outside of you. Drunk on wildness, listen to what lies beyond. Here's a story. Listen. The, the, the rationality has to be used in, in a proper balance with the, with the creativity and with the roots. When we improvise, we are, it's two madness, fantastic, that, that uh, they, they interact the good, but we go far away any, anywhere, so we need sometimes the, the rational part, that the, is the, the, the balance between the rational and the improvisation and things. Otherwise, you know, you know. I am really, really excited now about the news. I've been listening again last night, uh, me and David uh, around uh, three o'clock in the night with some whiskey and <laughs> we both thought that it is uh, the news funny, it is enjoyable and, uh, you know, it's, it's a fantasy thing, it's not the tune. and the pureness. But I know where to find the music of the wine. That is the real white wine which corresponds to the music. Because the wine you drink in Ireland and also in Italy in the normal bottle is not corresponding to the music. You understand? So I want you to drink the wine that has the wildness and the pureness of, of Irish music and of, of the roots. You know? And uh, but you have to be with me. Not only me, but with me, the Puglia and the Lita, and then to teach the, the music of the wine.
I'm afraid of myself more than of you. I'm afraid that I'm too mad, that I can go too much out of rationality and make too madness things and too confused, you know. for patience, for patience. But I know where to find the real wise wine which corresponds. It's too madness, fantastic, that when we 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 when Seven billion names for patient. I am a patient. I am patience. I am patient. I have to be right, you know, right. The best things for me of Michelangelo, the sculpture, the Michelangelo was the unfinished pieces, improvised, you know, unfinished, without pieces, without head, without, I don't know if you ever saw in Florence. Those are the ones that emotion me, not David. The, 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 the.
the, the secret is the balance between the rational and the improvisation and things. Otherwise, you know, you know, I have to be right, you know, right. The best thing for me of Michelangelo was the unfinished pieces, improvised, you know, unfinished, without pieces, without head, without, I don't know if you ever saw in Florence. Those are the ones that the motion me, not the David, the David. The, uh, and uh, me and you, we can be naked on top of, on the, of a chair, and we can be much more beautiful than the David of Michelangelo, I think. Three, 3,000 people queue for seven hours to have a look a piece of marble. They could, should make a queue to come and look at us, you know, in a chair, naked. Ciao, ciao. <clears throat> Secret Life One Magical Duality, a cinematic opera by Alton O'Brien. Alton, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful new work with us and so uh, giving us the pleasure and privilege of the world premiere broadcast tonight. Congratulations on it. This work, funded by the Arts Council of Ireland, yep. written uh, in response to the COVID-19 lockdown and uh, as an artistic and personal response to, yeah. uh, to, the, to the lockdown. Um, we've had another lockdown since. We're, we're here in December. Uh, it's very hard to plan anything. But uh, with that said, uh, your, let's say your aspirations, your ambitions for 2021. Yeah, well, there's a few things now connected to our, our lovely owl again. There's um there's another show, a related one, coming up in January with First Fortnight Mental Health and Arts Festival. So that's um slightly related, but very different because it's with a collaboration with a filmmaker, Alex Foster, and photographer. But apart from that, then, I'll be looking forward to some more composition-based work with CMC here and being the emerging composer, along with Anya Mellon as well. Um. So it's, I think it'll be an exciting year, probably less fiddle playing live and more sitting down writing music. <laughs> we look forward to, to hearing the results and absolutely yeah. look forward to working with yourself and with Anya, developing uh, new projects across 2021. Alton, thank Thanks. you so much for joining us. We have the last salon of 2020 next week and that's a special Christmas edition with the improvisation from Sebastian Adams viola, Lena Andonovska on the flute and Barry O'Halpin on the electric guitar and do stay with us for that and all the details on cmc.ie and on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Thanks so much for joining us.